We're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org. I'm here with my colleague Stu Miniman, and we're live at HP Discover, HP's big customer event. This is theCUBE, the uh, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage. This is our second year at HP Discover, and we're here with David Scott, who runs the storage business for HP. He's the executive vice president of that, that business line, former CEO of 3PAR, many of you know, the big acquisition a couple years ago that HP made in a bidding war with Dell, HP won and uh, it's doing great with the, the company now, but uh, Dave, David, uh, welcome to theCUBE, first of all. It's great to be back. And David has uh, responsibility for the entire storage portfolio now, not just yeah. the, the single product you know, <laughs> company that you guys were, and yeah. tremendous success story there, but uh, it's two years in now. Um, and, uh, 18 months, not quite two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two years in from when we were talking about this at <laughs> VMworld, right? Yeah, we were watching the blow by blow, so, uh, so how's it going? Really well. I, I think uh, HP is in the process of transforming the storage industry. I, I think I've mentioned before we have uh, aggregated some terrific stro storage assets in uh, platforms like Three Par and Store Once and Left Hand and iBricks, and uh, we're really bringing it all together and uh, and making a mark on the market. Yeah, I mean, frankly, the, the portfolio was deficient three or four years ago. I mean, I would go to analyst meetings and I'd say, okay. You know, you got EDA and you got these products, they're good products, but you know, all the cool stuff's happening at 3PAR and Compellent and you, you know, iBricks and, and left, you know, left hand of course was an acquisition. So, conscious So strategy, now all the cool stuff's happening at yeah, HP. So, so, but, so this is the thing, you and I have talked about this a number of times, the whole um, best of breed you know, versus integrated stacks, right? And now it's, the whales are sucking up all the good stuff, right? So, what's happening there? I mean, what's your take on all that? Well, I, you know, I, I think we feel that the the world's been transforming uh, with this evolution towards cloud, the delivery of IT as a service, whether it's private or public cloud, uh, the massive explosion in unstructured data and human information, and fundamentally, all of the kind of leading architectures in the industry by revenue, they were all designed 17, 22 years ago, very different circumstances, not you know, fit for purpose for these new generation of challenges. And, and the opportunity HP has seen is fundamentally to, to bring forward four modern new software storage architectures that are best in breed, comprehensive, going from kind of one end of the spectrum all the way up to massive, highly scalable systems that really deliver tremendous agility, efficiency, simplicity for our customers. Yeah, so, um Let's talk about store once. I mean, you guys are making a lot of noise about that, and making a number of claims. Very aggressive marketing for, for HP. Going, you know, this frank, frankly, going after EMC. You talk about better performance, better restore performance. EMC is the market leader. They acquired Data Domain, Avamar, have a big market share. And now, the interesting thing is, store once was developed inside of HP. That's right. It's uh, it's absolutely organic development out of HP Labs. We have more than fifty uh, patent pending innovations there brought to market by HP Storage uh, two years ago. Two years ago, we set out this vision of federated deduplication, the idea of having a single deduplication algorithm uh, for all of the use cases around the enterprise and therefore being able to pass unrehydrated data through the network very efficiently. Rather than all of these incompatible technologies from companies like EMC, with deployed in different use cases, and you can't pass data between them, without going through this massively expensive rehydration cycle, passing it through the network, consuming lots of bandwidth, and, and, and deduplicating it again. Very, very inefficient, difficult to manage, and uh, we're offering really clean, single architectural approaches. And, and we're doing it in, in, with uh, the deduplication vista disk backup space with store once, just as we're doing it with 3PAR on the primary storage space. Yeah, so um, let's let's stay on the, the the deduplication piece a little bit. I mean, the pressure's on, right? I mean, you got a big market. It's surprised me the size of that that appliance market, the deduplication appliance market. It's now bigger than the tape market was, and yeah. I thought it would be limited by the tape market. What did I miss? Well, I I, I think. You know, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. What I mean is, let me be more clear. What I mean is, it would be limited by the size of the tape market. It's exceeded that size. Why? What what mental model did I not get? Well, I, I think quite, quite frankly, you're seeing the massive explosion in unstructured data. I, I think by 2020, uh, something like 35 zettabytes of data is going to be <laughs> kind of stored. 85% right. of that is going to be human information, unstructured information. Um, and it's really been 
uh, traumatic for legacy backup systems. They, they just can't keep up with the performance requirements. Uh, you have uh, a patchwork of solutions uh, for, for backup applications quite often. Sometimes you have you know, one application for backing up your physical servers, another application to back up your virtual machines, a third one for cloud-based you know, uh, backup solutions. Um, and what's more, I, I think a lot of these um, environments, backup repositories, if you like, uh, for most customers, they're archived. They don't have separate archives unless you know, there is a legal requirement for them to do so. And so trying to recover information in a granular way from those archives is also a big challenge. And so, so the, you know, over the, the last couple of days, between store once uh, introducing kind of industry leading performance at 100 terabytes per hour backup speed with our new source side uh, store once catalyst software, uh, native uh, backup speed of uh, 40 terabytes per hour, but more importantly, the ability to recover and restore at 40 terabytes per hour, the same restore speed as a backup speed, no compromise, unlike our market leading competitors. Um, we love when you take shots. Fund <laughs> fundamentally, <laughs> fu fundamentally, we are servicing this massive explosion in data better, uh, and we're doing some very exciting things with in integrating autonomy, with our data protector backup software with Store Once to allow more granular information access by introducing the world's first meaning based information protection system, and that's Data Protector 7, which is shipping now. Yeah, you know, I've made some announcements, uh, I guess, on Monday that's about right. that integration. So, you know, Autonomy's got a big customer base and, and should be able to move some product through there. The, the, the vision, David, of you know, deduplication everywhere with a single algorithm, no rehydration. I, I, I love that, by the way. I first heard it uh, in the EMC world like three years ago, and then EMC bought Data Domain, and I said, all right, well that's never going to happen. Yeah. And then you guys came out with that vision, and you started with the vision, you're now starting to deliver on it, you know, through things like Data Protector, and do you feel like customers are going to really hop on that, or do they need education? What are the barriers to them, you know, really adopting that, that vision? Well, I think the key for us is that there's now a real opportunity to service customers better because you know these first generation deduplication technologies, they have no high availability. EMC data domain, if you get a, a, a node fail, you, it, you need to fix it and then there needs to be manual um, intervention to restart the backup streams. The B6200 that we introduced in November last year, it has the unique capability <coughs> excuse me, of autonomic restart, a high availability solution. The system will detect if there's been a failure and automatically restart the failed backup streams on other nodes within uh, the B6200. And, and that is the kind of differentiation we've been offering. Higher restore speed. Um, we're five times faster restoring from the B6200 than EMC is with data domain. Um, does that matter? Of course it does. How much does downtime cost? Yes. Hundreds, you know, millions of dollars a day, and we can literally recover as much in one day as it will take EMC with data domain to recover in one week. So there's a demand out there, and with this new software being supported by backup applications like HP's Data Protector, by Symantec Net Backup, with Symantec Backup Exec soon, it's very easy for customers to swap out these kind of generation one deduplication engines and swap in uh, HP store once technology. Okay, so the pressure's on, right? We should, a year from now when we're sitting here, hopefully we'll be sitting here, we'll look at the IDC data, you would expect that that slice of the HP pie, the slice of the backup pie to be much more toward HP, is right? That's the expectation. Yeah. You guys are being very aggressive about that. Well certainly if you look at our products like store once and, and three part, they have incredibly high growth rates. Um, mm -hmm. Store once has been running at uh, either near triple digit or triple digit growth rates over all of the last few quarters. Right. Just like the the three par platform, which has been growing at triple digit growth rates, uh, three par, uh, by the way, happens now to be the largest storage array product line that HP sells. Mm -hmm. uh, a real milestone that uh, that we've passed. Really? Um, absolutely. But but I think you know there, there's mm. incredible momentum behind the business, e even though. Um, uh, HP's overall storage business only grew 1% last quarter, year over year. Uh, under the covers, the more interesting stat was that we grew 8% year over year from an external disk storage perspective. And when I compare that to 
the reported uh, growth rates of all of our competitors like ENC, NetApp, it exceeds it. it, exceeds all of those competitors significantly. So I, I think you're starting to see signs that there can be positive market shift. Yeah, yeah, so I can I just clarify one of the things you said, you said 3PAR is the, the, the leading product, number one product within HP, I mean within HP storage, right? Within yeah. HP storage, okay. absolutely. Yeah, and so just for people's clarification, I mean these are markets that are growing, you know, the, the three par storage market, not the three par piece, but the storage market that three par participates in is growing at, I don't know, single digits, you know, single 10 digits, percent, yeah. right? And the 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 store once market, the deduplication appliance is growing much more quickly, you know, 30, 40 percent, and you're saying you're growing at triple digits, so you're gaining share there. Yeah. So so you know, I I think back, you know, if you dial back 10 years ago, you know, HP dominated the internal DAS marketplace with, with, its, with its server portfolio, and now HP has you know, a solid portfolio of external storage, but what, what I find really interesting, and I cover the convergence space, is HP is one of the few vendors out there that can really put those pieces together, the compute and storage. We've seen a blurring of uh, those technologies. HP is partnering with companies like Fusion IO, heavily involved in Flash, um, you know, c can you talk a little bit to what you know, your storage group is doing with the compute guys these days? Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, our whole converged storage strategy is based and um, predicated on leveraging industry standard platforms, sure. mainly because we're the number one supplier of, uh, of industry standard servers in, in, in the world. Um, uh, and so uh, platforms like our left hand uh, scale out iSCSI solution directly leverage our ProLiant and our Blade system platforms. And, and that allows us to really deliver complete converged solutions today. In, in, and if you look at left hand, we have some really exciting uh, stuff. The whole area of virtual storage appliances right. is set to start to kind of explode, and we've been a leader there. We've had a left hand VSA, virtual storage appliance, for, for a significant period of time. And in solid state, you know, it was actually the first, one of the first platforms in that space to support solid state disk in industry standard technology. Uh, we also, um, uh, earlier in the year introduced the P4900 implementation of left hand, which is an appliance uh, 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 solution for scale out. And that was a complete solid state solution as well. So we, we've made great progress there. We've made great progress in solid state in uh, other areas of uh, the product line like 3 uh, In fact, you know, solid state drives and uh, really team up very nicely with sublun storage tiering. Those mm -hmm. two technologies are, are very co-linked. And few people would know, but the HP 3PAL platform was actually the first high-end platform ever to support the combination of uh, sublun uh, storage tiering with our adaptive optimization product with solid state disk. So we've been a leader there, a leader in convergence, and we see the opportunity to leverage the fact that we're a big storage player, or a big server player, uh, and really deliver more value in the converged industry moving forward. I want to stay on 3PAR for a second because it's such an exciting story. I was walking around the Discover show floor and I stopped by the, the storage area and I saw, next I saw the, the yellow 3PAR uh, uh, device, the system, and then a sign that said, tier one storage for the cloud. So tier one, you were the, you know, you ran the XP product line before you, you know, went to 3PAR. And that was the sort of classic tier one, reliability, availability, serviceability. Is the definition of tier one storage changing? No, I, I, I think um, if you look at the, the environments that the HP 3PAL platform was originally targeted for, it was for these large infrastructure as a service public cloud providers. Utility. Yeah, these yeah. these <laughs> are effectively <laughs> utilities. Yeah. You don't get more tier one than a utility. I still have the red herring all it, marked it, up. It's exactly, it's and, and seven out of the top 10 global hosting service providers use 3 par as their tier one storage for the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fundamentally the, the success that the platform's had. Um, and as people start to adopt private clouds within their own enterprises, they want to use the same technology that the leading global hosting service providers have had so much success with delivering tremendous mission critical availability over a long period of time. And so that's why, in part, we're growing at 100% uh, plus growth rates uh, quarter right. after quarter. And I, I do want to make a point though. Some people say, in HP, is 3PAR just replacing EVA? And that's absolutely not the case. If you take the example of combining EVA and 3PAR revenues together, Last quarter, we grew 19% year over year 
So the combination of EVA and 3PA. So we're clearly taking market away from other vendors like ENC, like network appliance, et cetera. I have to, I'm getting this, the two minutes on here, so I have to ask you, because you are a very successful entrepreneur, CEO of a public company, you know, tremendous exit, um, and you participated in one of the greatest wealth creations I've ever seen in storage. You know, you know that you timed it just amazing, in three park, compellent, and you know, on and on and on, Isilon, et cetera. Are we going to see a similar trend with the flash guys, the, the 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 takeout of extreme I/O at a reported what was it 400 and change, even though that wasn't a publicly announced number, but that was kind of the whisper number. Are we going to see a similar value creation, in your opinion, in that flash area, or is this a little bit too early? Well, I, I think it's not clear where the the end state value creation in the flash market or the non-volatile memory market is going to be. I, I uh, and and there are a lot of opportunities for vendors like HP that have very strong server and storage intellectual property and franchises to create value that um, individual startups may not be able to create by themselves. So it, it's one of those differences between the opportunities that, that avail themselves to Compellent and 3PAR and Isilon, et cetera vis-a-vis -vis the situation that uh, the flash market. Because of the end-to-end -end systems. Because uh, of the end-to-end end system required. linkage that is likely to be uh, a, a dominant factor in uh, the solid state market. Right? Last question, what's keeping you at HP? I mean, you seem energized, you look good. Look I love the opportunity. I, I mean, you know, who wouldn't like to take just these incredible uh, assets, uh, drive them kind of hard in the direction of solving real customer problems as they exist today and are going to exist in the future? Uh, and being able to transform the, transform the storage market, and that's what we're doing here at HP Storage. David Scott, thank you very much. We really appreciate all the, the support. You're coming on theCUBE all the time, and uh, it's great to see you again. Delighted Good to be here. Thank Good you so much. Thanks, Stu. All right, this is theCUBE. Uh, keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest.